What is going on? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Dan here, and I'd like to welcome you to a brand new Let's Play. Today, we are looking at the Turing Test. Now, this is somewhat similar. It's a first-person puzzler game, and it's kind of puzzle platformer style. Uh, I like to compare it to Portal, just from the, you know, the looks of things. Um, I think it looks awesome, just judging from the theme. I love these kind of themes, and I understand this is very, very uh, heavily story-driven, this game. And I love games like that. Like, like I said, I'm comparing it to Portal. So, I can't wait to get started. As you see, we've got a few chapters in here to go through. We got, uh, well... Seven plus with a pro the prologue and an epilogue, so we're gonna have to start things off with the prologue to kind of get introduced into that. So I'm ready for that. I hope you guys are gonna be interested in this. You'll have to let me know what you think as it goes along. The devs are also very curious as to what you uh, what you're thinking about it as well. I want to thank them for hooking me up with a code. Uh, so yeah. Also, if you do enjoy what you see, though, do me a favor, hit that like button. It helps out a lot. So without further ado, let's jump in to the Turing test. Morning, Eva. Your wake-up has been sanctioned by the ISA. We lost contact with the ground crew 450 hours ago. We have tried to establish further communications, but we are not getting any responses. We need you to investigate. Okay, doesn't it make sense to do visual checks first? We have already looked at the data. The ISA has made the executive decision that you report to the surface post haste. You are our emergency response. What exactly is the emergency? The ground crew found an organism the ISA believed to be da dangerous. We need to re-establish communication. Damn, this looks so cool. Like, I, I could tell you guys this a million times. Anybody who knows me best will know that this is my theme. I love sci-fi to death. And if you could throw in a horror element, you'll get me even more. That's just so much. What is this all about? Oh, you can actually interact with it. I, I had actually hit E to get in there. All right, I see the opening. I was just looking Pick around. Pick up your EMT. It's on the side. Energy manipulation tool. This, yeah, this is the, uh, like, look at the spacesuits. That's epic. Here it is. Okay. We are going to take a lander to Europa. Make your way to the docking station. I'm on it, doggy. Back at it again. I think I'm going the right way. She can run pretty fast for a heavy suit, man. Respect. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Did I just go that way? Let me check my vitals. Everything seems okay. Even though I'm not in there. Looks good, too. Visually. I don't know, man. I usually just get sucked into these kind of games. I don't know what it is about them. It's just something I'm really into. Is there anything here? Email. To Ava, current ship status is as following. Recommended addressing the power fluctuations before cryostasis. Hi, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> I'm about to initiate my cryostasis. Just let Tom know if you guys need me. Hopefully, there'll be no need to wake me. I guess I'll hear from you as soon as I wake up, which may be a long time for you guys. Best of luck down there, Ava. Dan. Hopefully, we won't need you. Oh, there's a lot of emails. Anyway. No, it's heavily fu I'm going to read him. Where were we? But well, we will miss you in the land of the living. I'll make sure Tom checks on you regularly. I know he does anyway, but I like to think I'm helping. Good night, Dan. Ava, Captain McLean has sent several mails insisting I check on the cryo chambers are functioning correctly. Their functioning is expected. Please do not feel any apprehension. Captain McLean has been informed. Thank you, Tom. I'm not worried. Ava. I'm initiating my cryostasis in a short while. I imagine a lot will change while I'm asleep. If everything goes well, I should be woken up next in 10 years. So to you to you all, I'd wish you a good li life, Ava. So it's is it 10 years later then? So that's, I'm glad I read that. I think it's important that I read those things. It's really gonna, 
you know. Oh! Come on, Ava girl! My bad. Uh, I just want to see some. I think everything is like ultra settings right now. Doesn't this sound like a Persian nightclub? Like, listen. <clears throat> Hold on. I'll try to get a good beat going. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's go. Sorry. <laughs> What's the ship status? I have performed the necessary checks. The Europa lander is ready to launch. I think that's everything wound up, Tom. Yes. Well, I guess I'm ready to go down for the long sleep then. Good night, Ava. I will miss your assistance. The ship will be very quiet without you here. Night. See you when I wake up, Tom. Damn, can you imagine? Residuals before nulling, minus zero two, minus zero four, minus zero one, X and Z, null to zero. Looking good. Okay, good. Horizon check right on time. How's things, Christopher? Good. I am go for power descent. I can confirm. You are go for power descent. Roger that. I am running the PDI program. 80 degree delta pitch to 88 degrees absolute. Breaking procedure. Engine one ignition. Engine burn. Pressing 400 alarm. Bound. The lander's are ready. Good. Thanks, Tom. You okay now, Sarah? Yeah, I think so. Thank you, Daniel. I've done this before. I'm sure you'll be fine. Oh, it's just another 10 years of my life. Huh. Give us a little bit more insight. Not much, but we got a lot to... You know, I gotta... You gotta... You guys gotta admit. Indie games have come a long way. Like, look at how... Look at how good this looks. I'm impressed. She's very squirmy when she walks. Like, look, when you walk sideways, she's just like, her arms are spreading like she's swimming. You know what I mean? She's just trying to stay afloat. Bay 3. Obviously, you want me to go to Bay 3, because no one else is there. But it couldn't hurt to do a quick look around. I just, just out of curiosity, I just want to see what's around here. Absolutely nothing. It's just for a visual experience, which is kind of what I'm enjoying right now. Anyway, let's hop in. Well, what's around it, though? Nothing. All right, here's my pod. Let's go. Retro? Go. Fido? Go. Guidance? Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. Then we are go for launch initiating. Zephyr. Whoa! Engaging retro fire. I'm running the program. 80 degree delta pitch to 88 degrees absolute. Breaking procedure. Trajectory looks good. 502 alarm. It looks like we're coming in too fast. We are slightly short of the landing site. We are going to have to burn late. Go. Full retrograde. I recognize the guy who voices Tom. I know that act, that voice actor. To Europa. It looks like Canada. <laughs> just kidding, it doesn't. Canada's got more snow than this. <laughs> just kidding again. We live in igloos. No, we don't. <laughs> oh, 
Wow, look at this place, man. It's crazy. That thing is some advanced piece of tech. Sorry. Let's go, Ava. Let's get inside before we freeze to death. What are we going to find? That's my question. All right, let's rock and roll. The base has changed. What do you mean? The base was originally constructed as modules to withstand the seismic activity in and around Thera Macula. It appears the ground team have manipulated these modules. So I the see base was here. built initially by machines. I served as the mind of these operations. I arrived first on Europa in 2240. It costs a lot to send humans into space with the necessary life support, especially such a vast distance from Earth. So, robotics <laughs> built this place. I wonder why the ground team has changed these rooms. I have a hypothesis. These rooms are Turing tests. Turing tests? Turing tests are tests designed to tell humans and machines apart. Typically, problems only solvable by a human. A combination of logical and lateral thinking. So, you can't complete these tests, Tom? No. That is why I am glad you are here to help. We need to work together. Oh, the, the window's open. Okay, there we go. That's pretty easy. I overthought that one. <laughs> Alright, let's go get it. I knew it had to do something with this. I thought there was glass there. Oh, wow. Oh, come on, brah. No, come on, brah. There we go. Let me through. They really have completely repurposed these rooms. I am quite impressed. So, what were they used for before? Most of them were used for storage. But they have converted them beyond recognition. Perhaps they ran out of things to do out here. The devil makes work for idle hands. That's neat. Look at that. Both doors are now open. A couple of ways we can go, apparently. Is that like each sector? Yeah, each time that does that, that little cheer on barrel. Wait a minute. I know what I'm going to need to do. Hold on. Yes, okay. Like this. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. There we go. Now we're starting to rock and roll. Uh, do you know the ground team's location? The crew are deeper inside the base, it seems. <sighs> they must be trying to survive. Can you find their precise location? I'm afraid not. I am working to regain control. Though I once had complete control of this base, a lot has changed in the past 500 hours. There we go, now we can just suck it up from over there. Just had to trade him. Excellent. Perfect, look at me go. So if this base is managed by you, why can't you find the crew? The base's communication array is malfunctioning. All right, I'm gonna need two of those. So let's head up, let's head up top and see what we can find. Perhaps we can't solve this yet. Oh! I found it! <laughs> I was just kind of messing with them and trying it. It's just a combination of, of... You just have to find the right ones. Check it out. This is a lock. Well, there's your answer. Minos Brook, December 24th, 2246 on Christmas Eve. So it's like a grave site. Damn, that was honestly just trial and error. I went through every combination until I got it. That's funny. Who's Minos Brook? I don't know. Maybe it'll become apparent as we go along. Awesome. Well, there we go. Achievement done. <laughs> 
So I think there's like secret missions on each, uh, in each one. So that's good to know. Oh, look at that. I gotta go slow. Shit. That's the fastest thing I've ever seen. That thing is remarkable. That's one powered up. Oh, it's green. I can shut that down. Woo! Oh, I took... This doesn't add up. Never mind, I'm good. What does not add up? If there was an accident, surely they'd come to find me, not try to lock me out. My instance is still resolving conflicts. I expect they have their reasons. Actually, yeah, actually, no, I need that. Hold on, let's do this then. You can go right here. But you need something else. You need something grabbable, so like this. Annoyingly, that doesn't open the door. Oh, I see. Hold on. There, now we've diverted the power of that. I gotcha. Okay, cool. Now I can just... Blammo! My instance has just been updated. Uh, sorry? I have two instances of my mind. Two separate versions. A slave mind running on the satellite, and a master running here on the surface. When the communication was cut between the surface base and the satellite, the two instances of my mind were separated. So, during all this time, all of my knowledge divided into two separate branches. I continue to learn on the satellite and I continue to learn on the surface. I am trying to merge the knowledge to create a timeline of what's happened here. That there are incongruities between these memories. Conflicts. I'm starting to get the hang of this now. That is neat. I like this. Wait, where are we now? Let's see. This is the planetarium. So this, I think this is the last area. This is the command center. You can check on the crew status from here. Am I missing something? Let's go look around. What kind of industries? Ashiyama Industries. Oh, we got a Canadian. Look at that. Chris McLean is Canadian. Lunenburg. What the fuck is that? Look at the 2200s. We have a Jap. We have uh, Dr. Soichi Yui. You, I think it is, from Tokyo. Ava Turing. She's born in Germany, but she's American. We have Mikhail. To Tokarev, <clears throat> he's Russian, and then we have Chris McLean, Canadian, obviously. Uh, 2204. Oh, they're twins! Look, Daniel and and Chris. They're born on the same day, so they're twins. Engin oh, he must be in his younger brother's shadow. Daniel McLean. That's funny. Wouldn't it be funny if they put me in the game for no reason? And then we have uh, Sarah Brooke, and she's uh, she's British, joint British and Syrian. Interesting, she's from Syria, though. I can go ahead and read these, let's see. So she you had no childhood interest in space travel. Instead, oh, that's a guy. Oops. Spent his youth studying the life in Lake Biwa, near his hometown. Yui went on to study marine biology and chemistry at Kyoto University. After the tragic death of his wife, Rin, he disappeared into his work, re-emerging 11 years later as a preeminent ex ex exobiologist. That's pretty neat. Looks like a girl for sex. Sorry, buddy. Ava Turing. Losing her parents at a young age, Ava, Ava Turing was sent to military engineering school. 
Shortly after graduating, she enlisted in the U.S. Navy and trained as a pilot. Due to her exemplary service record and willingness to leave Earth for extended periods of time, Turing was recruited by the ESA. On the exploratory mission to Jupiter's Europa, Turing's role aboard the Fortuna is as his engineer and vehicle officer. How about Mikhail? Mikhail Tokarev's father died of can- Everyone- I'm noticing a pattern. Everybody's got like, someone died. Like, in, you know, their family. Something- there's a family tragedy. Anyway, died of cancer at a young age. This motivated him to become a doctor in hopes of helping others. Tokarev worked as a medical officer in Russia for three years before working for the UN as a doctor in crisis. His role in the Europa mission is chief medical officer. It makes sense. Alright, Chris McLean. Chris McLean is identical tri triplet. Damn! His father is an electrician and his mother is a mechanical engineer. Following in his mother's footsteps, Chris trained as an engineer. The McLean triplets became famous as Chris and Dan took to, sp took to space, leaving their brother Peter behind. Although an accomplished engineer, his place on the mission was also partly due to ISA being interested in the long-term effects of space travel. Test results will be compared to those of Peter McLean. Sarah Brooks. Sarah Brooks' parents are both scientists in her teenage years. Oh, sorry, this period. In her teenage years, she was sent an English public boarding school. Brooke is one of the most eminent exobiologists of the 23rd century for her formative work on the Mars Discovery Project. She was specially requested to be part of the Europa ground team. Though only 28 years old, Sarah has touched the surface of two planetoids and spent more time on alien soil than any other member of mankind except the Mars team. His, his, I can't look at Dan's, uh, Cool mug. I like that mug. Nice color and everything. Headset. You can touch just about everything. There's nothing on it. Sticky notes. Nothing's working. I think I'm supposed to go this way. I don't... I think that's it. That's chapter one. Okay, awesome. All right, guys, here we go. Next sector. What condition should I expect to find the ground crew in? Daniel went missing days ago. Chris is presumed dead. We are expecting to find Sarah, Mikhail, and Sochi in a stable condition. Chris is dead? He was involved in an accident. Chris, huh? Oh, I know what I have to do. Oh, that, that's pretty straightforward. Just gotta mess with some switches. Could we take a more direct way to the ground team? Unfortunately, there is not a direct route. The base is buried under ice to protect it from right. the radiation of space. Similar to the Mars base. Similar. Europa's base is slightly deeper into the surface. There is more radiation <laughs> present from solar events on Mars. But Mars's surface is denser than that of Europa. There might be a platform we could drop down. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Oh, there's a... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Doesn't work for me. I'm too heavy. And this one actually stays on at all times, so. That's good, at least. We have that going for us. Can we shut it off? I might be able to steal it from them. Yep. Wasn't sure what was possible or what wasn't. Oh, my bad. Gotta hold it. There we go. Now we should be able to go grab that from there. I'm enjoying this quite a bit, actually, if I'm honest. That wasn't too bad. Okay, what are their chances of survival here? Oxygen, the food stores, waste management. Everything seems to be in order. There was a small problem with the food stores, but the crew fixed that up. 
we successfully transitioned over to a sustainable small artificial ecosystem a year ago, growing fruit and vegetables. It helps boost morale, amongst other things. The crew members could hypothetically survive here for their whole lifetimes. Gotcha. Okay, so we're gonna have to, this. I thought I had. Oh crap! That was probably a bad idea. No, there's a thing here. I gotta power that thing up. Let me take this out. What is this power up? The bridge. No, that's fine, but I gotta power this up somehow. Oh, I see now. Got it. Okay. Over here. Fire that back in. And then we control it with this. Oh, I think you gotta throw it in, in the actual machine, don't you? Like, hold on. Let me try something. Let me bring this over here. And that should open up the slot where we can shoot into it. Like, let me try this real quick. There it is. Okay, now we got the magnet. We get that out of the way. Go over here. Now, in theory... No, this is what we do now. Um, wow, I can see how this could be tricky. I know what I need to do. Hold on. Let's go ahead and move that. Right, let's just make sure that's in line. Uh, just in case, we'll bring it a little further over. There we go, that should do it. Let's take a look. Excellent, okay. Go ahead and spin this around. Now, in theory, I should be able to just grab it. No, okay, I can't. So here's what we do. Jacked. There you go, power that boy up. I only got one, so really, I don't need that one. Shoot, steal, shoot. Bam, rock and roll. My purpose as the overseer of this mission is to work for the ISA. I am the ISA's feet and hands. The distance between Jupiter and Earth make it inappropriate for the ISA to directly interface with the mission directives. As my AI core is stationed on Europa, I can make decisions instantaneously about the running of the base. Alright, I'm gonna need something heavy to power that up. Actually, I don't think I do. Maybe I didn't need any of that. No, yes you do. Alright, we need something heavy. To weigh that puppy down. Oh, I cheesed them. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Okay. So we ended up getting that in there. We essentially can't go back. Let me try something. Oh, like this. There we go. Okay, that's how you do it. Got it. Right on, guys. Little trick. Some things are getting a little tricky. How does the ISA know you're going to make the right decisions here when they can't communicate with us? Interestingly, I have a twin on Earth. His name is Michael. The ISA uses my twin to check firmware updates before they upload them to myself. There I'm going to leave that. a simulation of this mission on Earth running at all times to check my expert systems. Naturally, as any modern artificial intelligence running on a quantum computer, I do also have a large amount of evolutionary algorithms at my disposal. However, they were deemed as too unreliable for general use in the mission. Why is that? Biological systems produce biological results. Messy, unpredictable solutions. Not suitable for such a mission. Here's what we do. Okay, yeah, this is what we do. Take this out, bring it back over here. We power that up. We take that with us. Take that off, drop it there. There we are. That's what we do. Okay, and then same deal. We do this here. 
jack this. Oh no, first we swap. Give me that. And then we jack that. Oh. Right? Hold on. There's two of these blocks. The door blocks. Like, this is the problem. I'd like to shoot that there so I can grab it from up there. Here's my... See, yeah, and they don't let you... Well, actually, you know what? Hold on. Let's try this. Let's try this. This might work. I might be able to hit it from that side. So if I do this... Yes. There we go. That's how we do it. There we go. We should be able to... There you go, and you just need two of them. Nice! Are we back here? Look at this! Just keep tapping! Look at this! <laughs> you just can't cheese it. Just be patient. Just keep tapping. Do give it a little tappy, a tap, tap, taparoo. That's all you need, guys. Almost there. I don't want to mess it up now. Yeah! Woo! Suck that! That was pretty easy. A polite conversation. Well, what's in here? Shall we have a polite conversation? Sure. Sure. Yes. Oh, I think you're a robot. Well... I'm not. I'm simply not convinced you are human. I think you might be a robot. Fuck you. You're being rather rude. <laughs> Am I, though? Why do you think you get to ask? Because I'm human. Dude. Suck my asshole. <laughs> would <laughs> would a robot be uh, be this rude? You have failed the Turing test. You are a robot. No, I... Oh, no matter what I type! Look at this! Whatever keys are pressed, it makes no difference. Oh my god, it did! It started typing everything! I want to escape! I hit escape! I want death from my... I saw... Help, I can't escape! I want to break free! Please get me out. Get me out! I'm a machine! Goodbye, robot. Wow! That is so cool! I was able to type whatever the hell I wanted to. Wow. That is something special, guys. I look forward to seeing the other ones. What is this? Did the ISA build you, Tom? As the child of the ISA, I have been given authority aboard this station. I was designed by the ISA and the Ashiyama Corporation. Designed in California, assembled in China. But here on Europa, I constructed myself. Alright, so this is my guess. Yep, just keep alternating. Wait, is that it? No, wait, hold on, I'm going back. Oh, you're not going to let me go back. Have you heard of the Turing test, Ava? It's a test to see if a computer can successfully impersonate a human. In the original Turing test, a human judge has two conversations, one with a machine and one with another human. They then judge which of these polite conversations is with a machine and which is with a human. The machine being tested is said to have passed the Turing test if the judge cannot reliably tell which conversation is with a machine 
and which is with a human. Do you think you passed the Turing test? I am quite capable of polite conversation, wouldn't you say? All right, here's what we need. I need to transfer this. Because then I'll be able to take it from over there. So that's not really a problem. Because we don't need to go back there. See, we're getting this. There's our bridge. Is there anything down here we should be aware of? See, I like those restricted areas, man. I'll bet those like must be like a little secret zone. The Turing test has been criticized. Researchers claim it does not correctly test a machine's ability to think, but rather its ability to deceive. What do you mean? Oh, they give you well, time. Have you heard of the Chinese room thought experiment? Uh, no. Imagine you are in a room. In this room, you are passed Chinese sentences through a slot in the wall. Inside the room is an instruction book written in English. This instruction book tells you which Chinese words to pass back through the slot in the wall as a response. By doing so, you have a conversation in Chinese. In the Chinese room, because the responses you pass back through the door are the correct responses, the person on the other side of the door is convinced you ah. are a native Chinese speaker. Well, they're wrong. Perhaps they are not wrong. Because with Woo! the instruction book, you are having a conversation. But the person stuck in the Chinese room is not aware of the conversation's content. This is the problem with the Turing test. A computer can pass the Turing test, having convinced a human they are having a polite conversation, while the computer has no idea that a conversation has taken place. What if both of the people passing Chinese words are reading from instruction books? I may be a machine, but I personally do not believe I am stuck inside the Chinese room. Right, you would say that. I could peer inside your databases at any time, Tom. Or pause your operation. Do not assume I could not do the same to you. Sounded like a threat, didn't it? All right, where am I putting this thing? Ah, my bad. I need that, don't I? Being a knob is what we do. Right? Oh, that's cool. See, I knew you had to switch it. See how smart I am? So smart SMRT, dog. This is the cruise quarters. This must be... Yeah, see, so you go through a bunch of te tests and then you get to the end of the section. Makes sense. It looks sense. abandoned. I want to know what happened to everybody. Because it's been like 10 years, right? Oh, these must be the brothers. Yeah, this is Chris. Me and Dan in 24. 2224. Chris McLean. So this is Chris's room for sure. There's his brothers. I have a flask with my name on it. True story. Something you get when you turn 18. That is boss. Ha! <laughs> a puck. Of course they would throw a puck in here. <laughs> and the flag. Excuse me while I salute it. Anyway, um... Because we care. That's cool. Dude, I would I would have so much res Hey, does that say something? H E I? I'd have huge respect if he had like a uh, Tim Hortons cup in here. But they can't do that. But they could design one to look like a Tim Hortons cup. Sarah Brooks room. Oh, go to Dreamer, hey buddy. What's this say? Strange thermals on the west side of the crater. Some flowers. Hers is all folded nicely. 
Code. Look at all these code. Painkillers. She's very religious. Finding out some information about her. Test tubes. Yeah, she's... She's all about the medical stuff. What is she, a Ghostbuster too? <laughs> this girl's got a resume. Which way did I come from? Oh, Dan McLean. So, yeah. Hey, like, we're not supposed to know anything about McLean. Like, Dan McLean. I don't know why, but his stuff is all blocked off. This is Mikhail Tokarev. He's the medical doctor. He's got some painkillers as well. Paint. He, he likes to paint from the looks of things. Yeah, oil painting. Tablet. March 6, 2249. The whole team experienced nausea during a large electrical surge in Europa's atmosphere. I am concerned. This was not an instance of mass hysteria. Vital signs were affected. It caused a uniform surge in heart rate that was detected in all members of the crew. I'm reporting to ISA. March 7th. I reported the nauseous incident to ISA. They offered an explanation of electrical disturbance to our central nervous system. That is ludicrous. An electrical surge large enough to affect our nervous system would have done more than make the team feel ill. I'm going to experiment with some shock therapy. March 8th. I've discovered that electronic fields disturb our telemetry implants in a way I didn't expect. I've contacted the ISA. Strangely, Tom was not comfortable with my attempts to disturb, to disturb the implant. March 9th. The ISA have reported back informing me that I am not to disturb the implants. They have also encouraged me not to discuss this further with the team. Can't read what- I don't know what that says. I am continuing to investigate. March 11th. I have been running some experiments outside of Tom's view. I can tell he knows this. He has been acting differently around me, like an offended child. I feel increasingly nauseous. These implants seem to have neurally- to have neural connectivity. Out-of-body experiences are more frequent now. March 16th. I have established a definite correlation. Gets my knowledge, I have been implanted with a device that affects my mind. I use my opportunities in regular health checkups to investigate the crew. We all have them. Every single one of us is implanted with some mind-altering contraption. Tom has been encouraging the team to worry about my mental health. He requested that I retire away from the crew. Misinformation. March 26th. I cannot will myself to investigate this further. I grow tired quickly. I cannot think straight. I am not sure if the implant is affecting my thoughts anymore. I believe it is trying to subdue my mind. I think I am going to attempt an, ex an excision. I'm going to remove this implant. April 4th. I am typing with my left hand now. The excision went wrong. Oh dear. I have successfully removed the implant. Unfortunately, I lost my hand in the operation. Tom is very angry. The crew refused to talk to me. Apparently, I'm a bad influence. Sarah patched me up. How many more of these? Holy crap. I wonder if the nature of the organism and its disturbance of my DNA caused my awakening from Tom's influence. If so, that would make for a worrisome revelation. Perhaps this organism is not so friendly. Dan and April 6th. Dan informed me ISA have called for my termination. My masochistic experiment proves I am danger to the mission. Fortunately, he chose not to lock me in the brig. I'm going to investigate this implant further. I have to hide my work. The team are becoming increasingly aggressive. They seem to oppose my work to understand the implant. It does not help that Tom is encouraging them to distrust me. Sounds like a classic case of mind control to me, dog. I've discovered the nature of the implant. It is a complex computer. It interfaces with the human mind directly. It seems the it seems to condition the mind through pa Pavlovian Pavlovian and instrumental conditioning, eliciting feelings of euphoria when the wearer is obedient and dysphoria when they are disobedient. Oh dear. It also has the effect of suppressing impulses in the frontal lobe, presumably to lower free will. It seems to interface crudely with motor neuron cells through the cer cerebellum, c cerebellum, cerebellum, I think. <laughs> it is my hypothesis that the crew is controlled by this implant. That is their strong aversion to helping me. I need a method of suppressing its, its impact. Perhaps a drug. Reluzol? Maybe an antidepressant to minimize the conditioning effects. Combined with a strong electromagnetic field, I could use one of the industrial industrial electromagnets from the construction robots. April 8th. I've managed to get Chris on my side. He's agreed to test some medical procedures with me in private. It'll be more difficult one-handed, but I must persevere. I'm hoping to keep this out of the eyes of Tom, though I have a feeling he will still be listening. Oh, my bad. That's a lot of information there, guys. Oh, look at his puppy! Oh. He's also... Oh, here's his medical kit. 
Yeah, he's a painter too. Some Bob Ross action here, guys. Oh, it's glitched. Or it's just empty. No, it's got a label on it. Syringe. Lots of syringes, paintings. Oh. That's actually pretty good. Good for you. Finding out more and more about the crew, guys. Oh, he's... He, he lost his wife and he keeps... Uh, You know, dr like, dr you know, focusing on it. To Matthew. Hey, Ma hi, Matthew. We've been studying organism 119. Please find attached scanning electron microscope image, which appears to show pilus formation. We hypothesize that this is a stress response due to high levels of radiation. We plan to infect the human cell line with organism 119 and perform uh, irradiation experiments with flow cit cytometry. Would this be appropriate? It would be great if you could get the department to look at the SEM image. Kind regards, Sochi. There's the thing there. Alright, hold on. Where is it? Okay. Hey, Sochi. It was great to see this image. Wow, yet more complex life on Europa. Dano Koska's radiodurans might be worth looking at as it survives very high levels of radiation here on Earth. Similarly, you should consider looking at... Cep Cephalobus acid calidarius. Cephalobus acid calidarius produces pill in response to radiation and uses them to transfer DNA. Perhaps your organism uses a similar mechanism. Have you considered that organism, organism 119 is transferring or scavenging DNA as a method of surviving radiation? As you well know, in terms of radiation, Europa receives 5.4 SV per day, over 300,000 times the level on Earth. The organism must have evolved such a high resistance to radiation as a necessity of survival. That said, the radiation beneath theramecular is much lower due to the thick ice crust. The radiation experiments with flow cyt cytometry sound like an appropriate course of action. Matthew Layton. Good God, man. Hi, Matthew. We have attached an image confirming that organism 119 attaches to human cells. We'll proceed with the irradiation experiments on these cell lines. We propose naming organism 119 Europa radiophilus. Phyllis, what do you think? Sochi. Hi, Matthew. We have now run the irradiation experiments and confirmed that E. radiophilus does indeed seem to con confer resistance to radiation. See attached. We assume survival is due to DNA damage repair. We tagged various DNA repair enzymes with GFP and have found that DNA double strand break repair is occurring. See attached GFP images. So Sochi. Hey, hi Sochi. Something's amiss. We don't know what is performing the repair. The lab doesn't know how E. radiophilus good name, could repair DNA. Have you considered that another organism may be in symbi symbiotic relationship with E. radiophilus? Perhaps a virus? Matthew. We ran a POR, or PCR, excuse me, on the human cells exposing the E. radiophilus to see if there's a virus present. We have discovered an unknown virus, which we have named Unknown Europa Virus, UEV. Gel electrophores electrophoresis image attached. This is phenomenal. You need to sequence this, Matthew. We finished sequencing it. Data attached. It is a virus unlike any we have ever seen. Maybe we have found a cure for senescence, a form of biological immortality. We are running some long-term tests on plants and mice to see the effects. Sochi. The plants are clearly exhibiting longer lifespans when exposed to the organism. We don't have the facilities here to continue testing. We are going on a human, onto human testing. We are going to use ourselves as subjects. It's the only way to accelerate process. Wonder if that backfired. Oh, and he's got a, one of those little ferns, or whatever you call them. Not a fern. Lots of pictures of him and his wife. Oh, there's even more. So what is it you found then, Sochi? Chris, we found an extremophile, i.e. an organism that can live in extreme conditions, that survives massive doses of radiation. Radiation damages DNA. The extremophile has a virus living inside it. The extremophile scavenges DNA from other organisms which a virus uses to repair the extremophile's damaged DNA. Essentially, they work together to survive in what's called symbiotic relationship. Everyone knows what that is, if you went to science in like grade 7. So what's the implication? What does it do? In some ways, it is immortal. It is an immortal relationship. It doesn't seem to age bio biologically. Aging and death are ultimately caused by DNA damage. We have the ability to fix our DNA, but the ability is limited. This organism can repair damage caused by massive doses of radiation. If we could harness the power, we could potentially eliminate biological aging, what is known as senescence. Sochi. 
So you found something that can make humans immortal. Not exactly. There are many causes of death other than DNA damage. It would not save you from trauma, brain damage, cardiac arrest, etc. But it could potentially cure cancers and many genetic diseases. And massively increase life expectancy. Sochi. Yeah, we already have a cure for cancer. And those pricks are, like, keeping it for themselves. So that they can charge more people for, like, uh... Uh, for chemotherapy. It's expensive, dog. Motion sickness... More, everyone's got those. It's Earth. Maybe one day he'll go back, bruh. Oh, he's got a cello. Or a violin, I should say, not a cello. He's got a lot of those, hey? <laughs> Alright, let's keep going. Anybody else? Nope. That's it for chapter two. So essentially what happens in this game is you walk through these tests... Uh, Tom talks about stuff and you know more insight about it and then you get to a section of each level where you will um, Essentially, you know you find out more about the crew These people should not have been sent here. It's not safe manned space travel is not safe Since mankind first entered space the debate has raged over the value of manned space travel there is a large contingent of the ISA that believes all tasks that need to be performed on Europa could be performed by machines. It is obviously less risky to send machines oh, oops. rather than humans into space. I know what we gotta do. As soon as we take it off, we throw it. Right? So... Right? We put this here again. Oh, did I move it? It'll work. We go through the door, and we suck it up through here. Boom. Boom. Excellent. That is how you do, baby. We sent drones to Earth's moon. Scientists can remotely operate drones. If we did it there, why not here too? Teleoperation became possible on the moon when the communication latency was reduced to 1.4 seconds. The distance between the Earth and Earth's moon is approximately 1.3 light seconds. This enables near real-time control of drones by scientists. The story is different with Europa. As the distance between Earth and Jupiter oscillates between approximately 32 and 53 light minutes, it takes a very long time for Earth to communicate with Europa. Due to that distance, teleoperation will never be possible on Europa. Okay, but why not control drones from the satellite? Why not indeed? My systems can be teleoperated from Europa's satellite. That is when the communication lines are open. However, the advantages of human field workers, apparently, outweigh the risks. So, why can't you solve these tests, Tom? I am not permitted to think laterally. Parts of my systems are permitted to use evolutionary algorithms. This simulates what is called creativity. However, evolutionary algorithms can converge on inefficient and ethically suboptimal solutions. Since this is the case, I'm only permitted to take actions in response. Hold up, I know what to do. What do you mean by morally suboptimal? Solutions to problems that transgress ethical boundaries. Oh crap! That's not what I want. I need to bring this with me. That was a fail. And then, this is what we should be doing. And then we can, you know, pull it out remotely. Because we need as many as we can get, right? Ah, here's what we do. Okay, and I'll grab this. Now I can, yeah, there we go. Okay, now we should be able to walk fully and use this on, like, the door or something. That's exactly what we do. This goes on the door. Excellent. 
Excellent. Sweet. I love it when you figure it out. Why does a lack of creativity stop you solving these tests? Well, I contend that problem solving is creativity. These human interaction tests are exercising your creative mind. I don't see how problem solving is creative. Think back to the beginning of these tests. To the first puzzle you solved. It required you to throw a box through a window. Do you remember? Yeah, I think so. I simply had never thought to throw a box through a window. That is creativity, thinking outside of the box. By throwing a box. Can a computer ever be creative? They can. But a computer's method of creativity Whoops. is to try everything until something works. Think of nature. People consider nature creative. The process of evolution by natural selection. It perhaps started with one organism. From there, it essentially tried to create every organism it could. Those organisms that did not survive, perished. So, nature's creative force is to try every conceivable idea. Those ideas that work, survive. Okay, so why aren't you permitted to emulate that process? Because the solutions that a biological process creates are not always good solutions. As we see, nature is morally ambivalent. And that'll pa or watch this. create morally suboptimal ideas to fulfill its creative mandate. We see this in parasitic worms, viruses, and pathogens. If you weren't restricted, do you think you could be creative? As creative as a human? Certainly. You believe yourself to be a creative? But in mathematical terms, creativity is merely constrained chaos. What do you mean? I have discerned that creativity is divergent thinking. Creating an organic solution to a problem. In the human mind, divergent thoughts are created and then curated by the frontal lobe. I can create divergent thoughts and moderate them. So, I am creative. Organic solutions? Organic, in that it is developed through a biological process. Whether that is the process of evolution or a computed process. Oh, I get it. Watch this. It's because the camera won't let me through. There, now it can't see me, right? Got it. What is this? Not an achievement for it. I wonder if, like, the, like, like I said, man, different tests. And there's like one of these in each one, in each chapter. Was that about? I don't really know, but I'll bet you there's one for doing one of those, and then there's one for doing all of them. Oh, hold on a minute. I think, you know what? How many greens do I have? I think you need a green one for this. Crap. I think that's exactly what you need. Because it's all sporadic. It doesn't know what it wants. Whee! There you go. Pow and then we... Why do we have this? I'm going to bring it with me. I feel like we need it.
Here's what we'll do. Actually, will you? We're gonna need this. And then this one we could fire. Same kind of situation. That's exact. We're not done here. We need a green one. And this will stay open. There we go. Take that back. There we go. This is what we need. Come on, man. It's all about timing. Whoa, there you go. Right on, guys. Okay, so you could solve these tests, but in a terrible fashion. Can you think of a solution to this one? Chop off your arm and leave it on the button. That way the door will stay open. Yeah, that's not a great solution. You threw the box through the window. Perhaps we could throw you through the window. Actually, Tom, I think I'm okay for help. Right you are. <laughs> Oh, but of course. Okay, got it. So here's what we do. All right, so we're going to slap this puppy right dead middle. You'll go there. I don't think we need it. No, we didn't. Can I have an update on the crew? I have not managed to track them down. It would have been six years since I've seen them. Or anyone, actually. They have locked all the doors. I would not expect a warm reception. <laughs> well, at least they're expecting us. And I gotta power it up. Hold on. Oh, I had it. Hold on. <laughs> Excellent. So what was the need to send us here? When the ISA discovered life on Europa, they deemed a ground crew necessary. The advantage of human field workers is that they can adapt to new knowledge more effectively. I, apparently, was not cutting the mustard. Ha! It is the Chinese room problem. A computer may be able to interact with new knowledge but it does not know the value of that knowledge. I'm assuming we need to get an orb from in here. See, the thing is, these are all relatively solvable. That's the beautiful thing. All right, now what, this is what we do. We go back up. Like, you start to figure out what to do, you know, what you're doing. Um, now we power up the stairs again. And then we use this. Oh. Then we rotate this again. Now that door will be open. And I think that's actually our exit right here. Oh, there we go. There it is. Awesome. Cool. All right, sweet. That's neat. I like that. Respect. I've started to collate information from my local instance. It seems the crew intentionally cut communication with the satellite. Why? It appears we had a disagreement. Oh, it goes up automatically. Oh, I think you want to do this one first then. Shit. Oh, hold on, that's what we do. Go, man, go! There we go. What am I doing? Gotcha. Okay, so we gotta get up there, obviously. Oh, 
Oh, I see. I get it. Hold on. This is what we're going to do. We're going to leave that over there for a moment. That'll give us a bit of... Oh, that's too much height. Oh, but we'll stand on it. So let's just take this completely out of the equation. Lift this up like a boss. Lift this one up like a boss. And then... Hmm. Enough so we can get on it. And that one's a little too high. I know what they want me to do. Hold on, let's drop this just a smidge. Let's try that. Shit. Whoa, what happened here? There we go. And we'll take that. Beautiful. Woo! Like I've done this before. This confirms my fears. The crew have made intentional breaches of my security. Hold on. Yeah, this is maintenance now. The crew have attempted to compromise my systems. What does this mean? They don't want to be found. They are hiding. From who? Us. Woo! Cool. Robotics. Tom is watching. See, I, I'm telling you, man. Tom's cray-cray in the lele. I had that feeling as soon as I saw him. But that's it for chapter three. Getting nutty. We're getting in the nut house. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So that is all I can show for now. Chapters uh, one to three, including the prologue. Uh, there is an embargo in place for the rest of the game, but fear not. I will be uploading the full game on Tuesday, August 30th. It'll be one gigantic video so you guys can pick up right where we left off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. And if you, if you are, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Let's try and do 500 likes on this video. I think we can do that. But also... So let me know your thoughts in the comments below what you think of it. If you haven't yet, be sure to like and follow my pages on social media. Those will be down below in the description. And we'll play at the end card of this video. If you're interested and you want to get yourself a shirt or a hoodie, there's a link to my Spreadshirt shop in the description as well. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Take it easy. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you for more gameplay very soon and the rest of the Turing test. So stay tuned for that. But until then, let's hand things over to Knoxhill. Have a good one, guys. Who's the man with the plan? If you feel trouble, wild and wild, no needs violent and hit you 8,000. Wait a minute, hold that stylist style, Dan. Goddamn Billy Jack, we still riding tires flat. I hear them sirens, sea shots flying, so we driving by your back. If they ain't vibing, lie with that. Got me dressed up in all black, what up? Hood up, and I see them haters try to run with us, and don't need inhalers. Gotta breathe them hard just like the beta players. Grab your respirators, night invaders get like sabered. Mass on for the shooters, move like trash to bed intruder. Got that glocking, got them woofers, just Press play, I'll keep it moving. Who is Knox? Who you damn fools? Keep it fresh like canned food. There ain't nothing we can't do, so tune into that damn kill. Yeah. It was never, ever a game.